This is a short introduction into the new upgraded Risk Tool Advantage system. Today's demonstration will be done on a demonstration account just to give you an idea. And it's just going to show you some basics on the upgrade. So on the home page, you will now see two big differences if you've used the system before. There is now a third information field that you will need to fill in when logging in. And this is the top one, which is the organization identifier. This is literally your company name. However, if you want this changed for any reason to become something else, then drop us an email and we can sort that out for you as well. And the username is the existing username. And then you've been given a six-digit password that can be reset when you log in, or your colleagues will be able to click on forgotten password to reset them at any time as well. When you log into the system, you'll be taken to a home page. But any names that were previously on your old account have been added. So if there's anyone that you think is missing, then we'll go through that and I'll show you how to check that as well. So on the home page, uh, we have Undertake Training and My Results. These are the only two tabs that will be visible to your colleague when they log in. Only those with administration access will see the extra functions. To complete a course or to view documentation, if you click on Undertake Training, it's broken into subject areas. If you then click on a subject, it will then display with the courses listed. There will also be any documents on your account in the section as well, further down. So any PowerPoint presentations that were previously on there will also be on there. To actually complete a course, if I click on View, you're then given the screen to either start or continue a program. Now this happens if you ever start a program and get called away to job, to work or to do something else. You can come back and carry on from where you left off should you need to. You'll see on the right hand side, it's now broken down into mini sections. In between each of these mini sections is a couple of interactive questions, just to make sure your, your colleagues are watching the screen. And at the end, it will then automatically pop up with the knowledge test or the end test. Previously, I understand that you had to go and look for these bits of information. Or you had to go and find the end test somewhere else. It will now automatically appear and you won't have to go and search anywhere else for it. On successful completion of the end test, and once it's submitted, it will automatically pop up with a pass or fail. Providing it's passed, you can then print or download your certificate, but it's also stored on the system for you. Your colleagues can rewind the videos as much as they like. That's not a problem, and rewatch certain sections. However, at this point in time, it will not allow them to jump straight to the end test without actually confirming they've watched the content. So we now move on to the administration side of things. So if I go to administration, trainees and trainee editor, you'll then see your colleagues listed. And if you've not registered any colleagues before, then we'll be able to add them for you. So if you've got somebody that's on the system that's left the organization and you need to archive them, if you click select on their name, you're able to scroll down and click on archive. However, if you ever need to pull them back or get their records for any reason, if you go to the top, you'll be able to search not only current trainees, but also those that have been archived before. And within that section, you'll be able to select and restore them. You're also able to edit. So if anybody ever changes site locations, departments and training groups, then you're able to update and edit that information as well. Now, just to give you an idea what a training set is, that enables you to specify courses to a certain group of people. At the moment, or poss possibly when your colleagues log in, they're going to see this huge list of programs and documentation that you may not want them to see and that might not be applicable. Therefore, um, we can split it down and I will show you how to make training sets, which will break it down further. 
So that's how you maintain the system in terms of archiving people that have left and editing people that are already on there. However, if you've got someone that you want to add, you can go to Add Trainee and you'll be able to enter their uh, person identifier or their username. So I'm just going to use somebody's uh, initial and then their surname. You can put their email address. However, if you don't have their email address, you may leave that blank. It just means that any of the email alert functions that we discussed will not work. And then the trainee aka is what will be printed on their certificates. We all re always recommend their full name. Here you're able to select somebody's site locations, departments and training groups. And also if you don't want them to get the six digit default password that, or the default password that you've received, then you can untick that box and type the password in that you would like them to have. When you click on insert new batch, it will add that person to the system. And you can check that in Trainee Editor as well. And you'll see that the person we've just added is now there. So also within the Administration of Trainees section, we have Password Editor. You guys as overall administrators are able to reset everybody's password. You're able to change everybody's password. Um, and you're also able to update your own. And also it's where you have, you'll have a section called Trainee Control. And that's where you assign the courses to the groups. But before that, I'm just going to show you how to set up a group. And you do that in configuration and set up groups. So if you've got any site locations or departments, then you can add those in. So if I pick another department, just as an example, I'm going to use administration department. And if I type that in and then click on insert, that now becomes a department that I'm able to assign people to. If I then go to Trainee Control and click on CBT Grid, it will display all of the groups that you've got set up. And here you're able to tick in all of the documentation and the videos that you'd like people in those groups to see. That then means that anybody assigned to that group will only see those courses or documents selected. And you're able to update that at any time and also export it to a spreadsheet. Here as well, there is other options. This is just another option of displaying this rather than a tick box grid. You click on CBT list. You can select the group. And then it will list all of the courses in it as well. And you can delete courses from that group. You also have trainees grid. And that is very simply where you can assign trainees to the groups as well. So if you ever want to go and change those, then feel free to change it at any point. It will update automatically and it's all real time. And the next bit we're going to move on to is the train and reports function. Now, any previous records or anything that was previously completed on your account have now been transferred over. Now, there are a couple of ways of displaying results and seeing who's done what. And they're under training report. You can do it by trainee, which would mean you can select on an individual, find their name. And if you scroll down, it will display the courses assigned to them and the status of them. You can see the pass. You can see the score the date and time it was completed, and you're also able to print a copy of the sticker or open it up like that. And you'll see a copy of the sticker and the date the course was completed. As well as this, what you can also do is export that one person's result straight to a spreadsheet, and you can download all of the certificates for that one person as well in one go. So the other way of running a report very simply and quickly for everybody is to go to training matrix. And some settings have been stored on your account, so you don't need to do anything. But if you click on update display, you'll then end up with a very colourful report that looks like this. Where it will list each person, the courses assigned to them, what's been taken, what's been passed, 
anything that might not have been passed by fail. And also it will say anything that's expired. You can then export that straight to a spreadsheet as well, and you can have a copy offline. Now you can break these matrices down further. You can, you can arrange it by site, location, department, and training set. However, as a general thing, they're all set so that it will cover everything. However, it will be dependent on what information you need to see, that you can break it down further as to what's best for you. Just a very quick one as well, in the dashboard, you can get some very quick figures based on your account, so the number of users, the number of programs that have been taken, but they are just numbers, they're not going to drill down into what's actually been completed. Uh, as a final feature of today's session, um, we have two bits of email functions on the system. We can either go to email usage and you're able to select groups of people and write a message to them. So if you've got any reminders on their training, you can select groups of people and anyone with an email address that email will go to. Or you can click on email alerts and in here you're able to switch on and off certain alerts and select alert periods as well. So there is an automatic email alert for welcoming new, new users onto the system, for reminding people of not completed training, for expiring training, for any new programs added or courses assigned, and also um, to enable you to get a copy of the certificate as soon as the program is completed as well, we can get that one switched on. Now each of these alerts will only go if an email address is added for the user. And I can actually provide you with a document which states what each alert says as well. So if you ever, if you want to see what each alert says, we can send it that to you. And you can then make a decision as to if or which ones you would like switched on for your organisation. As a final bit for today's session, uh, just to give you an idea, there is a frequently asked questions bit as well. So if you get stuff at all, feel free to use frequently asked questions and you'll see some help bits of information as well. Everything that's been covered in today's session can also be found within Undertake Training, where there is a toolkit called Using the System. Within this toolkit, you'll find various documents and help videos to assist you further. If you do require any further assistance at any point, you may use the live chat facility, where you'll find the icon on the right-hand side, you may email risktalk at humanfocus.co.uk or you can give us a call. Here we'll be able to assist you further.